listening to the Becoming Who You Are podcast, your guide to authentic living. Visit becomingwhoyouare.net for more resources, tools, and suggestions designed to help you create the life you want from the inside out. Now here's your host, Hannah. Hello, and welcome to the Becoming Who You Are podcast. Today, I want to talk about a pretty contentious issue and one that is super, super important. This episode is based on a blog post I wrote way back in 2010, and it's still one of the most debated and popular blog posts on my site. I know a lot of people might listen to this, hear what I'm about to say, and be like, girl, you're crazy, but I ask you to just hear me out and I'll explain why I have this particular perspective on this particular topic. If you spent any time reading or listening to psychology, self-help books or gurus, you'll probably have heard this mentioned, and this is the F word, forgiveness. According to many people, it's the answer. It's the key to enlightenment and it's a necessary part of becoming a better person. According to these books, if we don't forgive, we eventually turn into balls of rage and seething anger, trapped in a life of inner turmoil and destined to self-implode in a spiral of selfishness and stubborn self-destruction. There's a common theme that pops up again and again around forgiveness, and that's the idea that if we can't forgive everyone for everything they've done, no matter what it was or how we experienced it, then we're never going to be able to be happy, our personal growth will be stunted, and we will not be truly enlightened human beings. Another popular idea is that the bigger the transgression, and the more we're able to forgive that transgression, the more that we can grow personally and the bigger person we can become. I totally disagree with this. I do not like to hold a grudge and I don't like conflicts with people, but I certainly don't embrace forgiveness as this all encompassing thing that we should issue to everyone, no matter what they've done. I do do forgiveness, but only for the right people. These people are the ones who take responsibility for their actions. They take action to make amends, even if it means facing some tough stuff within themselves. Even then, there is a forgiveness line, and once someone crosses that line, there's no going back. An example of behavior that crosses this line for me is abusive behavior. And by abusive, I mean verbally abusive, so um, really derogatory name calling, swearing directly at someone and telling them to F off or mocking them, emotionally abusive, so making demeaning remarks about someone's height or their weight or their ethnic background, making demeaning marks, remarks about someone's abilities or manipulating or coercing them, physically abusive, so things like hitting, slapping, pinching, kicking, hair pulling, dragging, shaking, or another way of looking at it is touching someone in any way that isn't affectionate or for their protection, and then sexually abusive, so inappropriate hugging, kissing or touching, inappropriate comments or violation of someone's privacy. Of course, there are many, many more subtle forms of abuse, but I just wanted to provide a basic list here for context. None of these behaviors are acceptable. And that's why I don't buy this forgiveness for all approach. There are some people I just don't want to forgive. I can't forgive them and demonstrate respect for myself and my well being at the same time. So, what is forgiveness? Forgiveness is saying, hey, you did something, I was wronged, but it's okay, let's wipe the slate clean and move on. Genuine, real and heartfelt forgiveness only comes when someone has shown that they recognize their actions are wrong and have taken steps to make amends. When people don't do that, it's kind of dangerous to forgive them because we're opening the door for them to hurt us in a similar way again. In my experience, if someone wrongs you and won't take responsibility for what they've done, they will wrong you again. Another reason this forgiveness for all approach can be quite dangerous is because it's a way of letting ourselves pretend that things weren't really so bad, that we didn't really feel that hurt or that scared or that angry. Here's the thing, underserved forgiveness is not only cruel to you, it's cruel to the person who wronged you as well. By forgiving, we are condoning their actions and saying it's okay for them to behave that way. If we don't forgive, if we raise our standards and expect more in retribution, that affects their standards too if they want a relationship with us. The bottom line is that forgiveness has to be earned and it's totally okay 
not to forgive someone. There is no should involved in this. You can choose to forgive or not, whoever is concerned. There is such a thing as an unforgivable action or unforgivable series of actions, and pretending there isn't is doing ourselves a disservice. Not feeling able to forgive someone isn't a sign that you're a hateful, embittered person. If someone has really, really wronged you, it's self-care not to give them the opportunity to do it again. If you think of all relationships like a bank account, then good communication and interactions are like making deposits in the account, while bad communication and interactions are like withdrawals from the account. When you have a conventional bank account, there is a line at which you go into the red so much that your bank is like, okay, we're not going to give you any more money now because we don't feel confident that you can pay this back. And that's fair enough. They're not seething about it. They're not hateful about it. It's just a closure, literally, of your account. And this same principle goes for forgiveness in relationships. And this is any relationship, whether it's a romantic partner, a family member, a friendship, a work colleague, your neighbor, all these relationships have their accounts. And that account needs to stay in the black for the relationship to be healthy and satisfying to both parties. When someone goes into the red for a long period of time during your relationship with them, and there's no sign that they can really pay into that relationship account or they do something that puts the account so in the red that you don't really know what they could do to bring it back into the black, then you are perfectly at liberty to close that account. At that point, forgiveness would be like your bank saying, okay, you maxed out that £25,000 worth of credit, but it's okay, we'll wipe the slate clean this time and here's a new card with a £25,000 limit. What kind of crazy ass bank would do that? None. They would say, Okay, you maxed out that £25,000 worth of credit. We understand you can't pay it back. We hear you, you're insolvent. So we're going to close the account and write off the debt. And now you can't take out another card or bank account with us ever again. Good luck. And that's on a nice day. I really want to clarify that I'm not saying don't forgive anyone ever. I'm not talking about a spat, a disagreement, or an argument here. I'm not talking about grudges or bitterness or hatred. I'm talking about closure. The times when we can't necessarily forgive people are when they have hurt us in a really big, big way, or they have done something that is so damaging or so violating that there is really nothing that they can do at this point to make things okay again. There are very, very few people I have chosen not to forgive in my life. These decisions have been deeply considered and incredibly difficult. But when people abuse your trust, when they betray you, or when they verbally, emotionally, and physically abuse you, then yeah, it's basic self-protection not to give them the opportunity to do it again. However, contrary to popular belief, I'm not dwelling on the decision every day. I'm not listening to heavy metal and painting my walls black and spouting rage-filled epithets concerning these people at anyone who will listen. I just don't do that. In some ways, I've actually achieved what those self-help writers are talking about when they talk about forgiveness. I've been able to process a lot of the negative baggage that I was carrying around the relationship, and I feel pretty good about that. It's just that instead of forgiving them, I chose not to forgive, and that's how I got my closure. I've accepted that I cannot change the people concerned. I've moved on with my life, they've moved on with theirs, we're just not doing it together. And I know to my very core that I am a stronger person for that. I would love to hear your thoughts about this and your own experience with forgiveness. So please feel free to hop over to www.becomingwhoyouare.net and leave a comment on this post and share what you think. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions about this episode or anything else you hear on the podcast, please feel free to get in touch with me at Hannah, that's H-A-N-N-A-H, at becomingwhoyouare.net. Thank you so much for listening today and I look forward to talking to you again very soon. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Becoming Who You Are podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please head over to iTunes and leave a review. You can get in touch with Hannah by emailing H-A-N-N-A-H at becomingwhoyouare.net. Don't forget to visit becomingwhoyouare.net and find out how you can use rational personal development to live an authentic life.